Good afternoon. This is Ken Long at Tortoise Capital with a discussion of the Max Payne range compression concept. This is one of my favorite short-term setups in all time periods. I most usually use this for swing trading in shorter time frames by looking at the end of day setup. This strategy combines trade location and psychology. It's trade location because the reward to risk ratio is a function of how far price has fallen from, in this case, a 10 day high, and then examines the size of the last candle, assigns that the risk value, and then compares um, the return to the 10 day high in terms of how many units of, of risk or yesterday's range uh, it takes. So trade location in this case is one that is uh, based on oversold uh, conditions and it, it combines the ideas of psychology in the following way. Uh, first, somebody bought at the 10 day high and then for some reason we've had this maximum pain. So it gets to be a max pain candidate when it's fallen further from the 10 day high than the other symbols in its peer group. So if I was looking at the Dow 30, then I would compute how far each of those members uh, of the Dow 30 had fallen from their 10 day high on a percentage basis and say the one that had fallen the most is the max pain candidate or has the most pain. Uh, so there is some amount of psychology involved in this, what Robert Gardner used to call the Red Niagara. Uh, so some amount of negative psychology based on how far it's fallen. But then in the last bar, uh, in, a, in a perfect world, this is a very tiny doji. And so we've gone from the psychology of uh, accelerated sell-off into a psychology of uh, fair value in the tug of war between bulls and bears. So this is an enormous shift in psychology that represents uh, pain, moving away from pain into this uh, tightly compressed tug of war. So you get a combination of maximum pain, in terms of how far it's fallen, and range compression uh, to come up with this MPRC, as we would call this. So then what I'm going to do is, uh, is take uh, the value of yesterday's range, add five cents above and below, uh, to establish the triggers for entry and with the stop. So in this case, I want to see it open inside yesterday's range and then in an orderly way, uh, cross yesterday's high plus five cents or whatever the buffer is that you set. Uh, and then I'm going to play for uh, a return to the 10 day high uh, to compute the reward to risk ratio. It's not unusual to see something like a 50% retracement after a max pain sell-off and for this to be a very good trade. And so depending on things like market condition, intraday price action, uh, how fast it has made this move, um, previous support and resistance levels, that if I get this entry and it gives me a 50% retracement, it would not be unusual for this to be a 4% gain in a couple days. And if it's stalling and the rest of the market is stalling, um, and I've made my price objectives, uh, I don't mind actually taking that as an exit point. So I will map out at least the 50% retracement and the 100% retracement. Now, if I'm still in this and it breaks out to a new uh, high beyond the previous 10-day high, then we have reasons to say that whatever psychology triggered uh, this sell-off uh, is wrong and that we've got the beginnings of a, of a second leg of a breakout. And so this gives us a nice way to get into this uh, early on. Um, the, the condition of the previous trend prior to the sell-off is not, uh, is not uh, necessary. This could have been a sideways choppy, uh, sideways quiet that then collapsed. Uh, this could have been a long and strong trend that hit a 10-day high or a, an annual high or whatever and then had a temporary sell-off for profit-taking. Or this could have been the second leg uh, of a sell-off. In other words, it could have been a big sell-off, uh, a momentary pause, an additional sell-off, and it simply gets back to this 
uh, previous 10 to high. None of those conditions uh, matter in terms of computing reward to risk, but it is something that I would consider uh, when it comes time to uh, taking earlier profits or adding secondary positions uh, on successful trades. So um, this is max pain range compression. Let me uh, pause and show you a couple of sample setups. Uh, but first, uh, one thing I do want to show you is how important this is to me, that when I look at my uh, daily summary, in this case I'm looking at the ETF 30 for candidates, uh, I rank these on the basis of max pain range compression ratio. So it's so important to me that even though there may be other uh, uh, signals for swing trades, that I like to look at things in terms from top to bottom of that max pain range compression ratio uh, because that's my uh, my go-to uh, preferred setup. So here it is for ETFs and um, and here I'm looking at looking at it uh, from the Dow. So now let's take a look at a couple setups. So here is a typical setup. In this case, uh, we're looking at EWZ Brazil. Let's see, these are daily charts, and you can see that Brazil has been in a steady decline. Uh, but in terms of the local uh, price action, we have a 10-day high here, and now we've had a sell-off that terminated in a in a small doji, uh, and it's actually had a higher low. So this is even more favorable. And so now I would be taking this trade frame. Uh, as an entry five cents above um, the previous day's high and my target would be the 10-day high this is reinforced by the fact that we've got a double bottom here and and then a slightly higher bottom so this is almost a triple bottom and you can see a very nice trading range has been established um, in this area from like 39 to uh, about 43 uh, or 44 uh, and so I would play for a return uh, to this 10-day high and if it uh, got this far in uh, and collapsed or, or failed to uh, continue further, I would be quick to cash because as you can see the last three times that it got to this price level around 44, it sold off. So if I could get in around 40 and a half and get a trade to 44, that's almost 9% in could be two or three days and you can see just how fast uh, it makes that, that kind of a move. Uh, and so that would be my trade frame for max pain and then range compression. You can see how that last day's range uh, is so tiny. Now here's another one that you can see in XLE. And you notice uh, some massive pain here. Uh, I had some, a slight recovery, uh, pullback, another uh, recovery to uh, 89, uh, and then had a sharp sell-off back to a double bottom. Uh, and then found um, uh, support where the previous place it, it felt uh, support. Even this late, with this small, uh, with this small uh, candle on the third day of recovery, uh, based on trade location, we have a uh, we still are in a max pain condition. It's fallen this far from the 10-day high because of the tiny size of that of that risk uh, or the, the the day's range. I would buy. Uh, on the next day, five cents above the high of this day, and play for a return to 89. Uh, it also triggered, by the way, earlier um, in this trade, th two days ago, the size of this small doji with the positive white candle uh, also triggered max pain range compression compared to its peers. And then this would have been the orderly entry on day two, and on day three would be holding uh, some gains with, and having taken out uh, uh, this third day high. Now the next um, least surprising move would be to close this gap uh, to 86 and then a, a return to 89 uh, where again the, the question would be put to it. Is it going to power through and continue to the, uh, the previous swing high or is that going to be uh, the extent of it? So maximum pain, range compression. Um, you can see in this case clearly the negative psychology that can became oversold and um, uh, really fear-based selling. Uh, and then that was quickly reversed with uh, buying energy. And that's what this uh, idea of max pain range compression really does. It changes uh, the psychology from uh, fear to indifference to uh, beginning of uh, recovery. 
So that's why it's a combination of both um, trade location and psychology. Uh, here's an example of a successful uh, execution in Caterpillar. So this was our 10-day high. This was the sell-off into a tightly compressed doji. This was on the, the second day. It opened, you can see it opened inside the trading range, took out the previous day's high, we get the entry, and then simply manage that exit using um, uh, using the uh, the dragon, and um, and we take a one two three exit here, and it didn't even get to the previous swing highs, uh, but simply executes right here. So max pain range compression. You can take this idea further and reverse it the other direction. This is the same concept, only now um, uh, max gain range compression, where you have a 10-day low uh, as an extraordinary move higher, and then there is no more follow-through. And You notice it sets up this nice tight channel. This is actually a max gain range compression in the other direction. I would be uh, taking a short uh, 5 cents below uh, the low of the previous day. If it breaks out to the upside, uh, then I can play um, uh, for the long side and hope for an additional leg up like this, but it's had 10 days where it failed to follow through, so now a collapse below this price level. I'm expecting to move back to the Bollinger Band mean or even the bottom of the river and have a very tight uh, unit of risk, so we could think of this as a max pain range compression, but uh, to the short side with targets of Bollinger Band mean, far side of the river, and then the, ten, uh, in this case, the previous swing low. In these cases, where you can see where I would consider adding a second position if it breaks this red line, if it breaks that red line, if it breaks this red line, so I can ladder my entries on the basis of uh, uh, money in hand. Here you can see the idea in uh, McDonald's. Uh, we've had this uh, sharp swing up, sharp swing down. You can see that this would be a, uh, a, a very uh, narrow last day's range here based on the mechanical entry and mechanical uh, exit. This could also be a place to go short. This is a nice way to play uh, a breakout in either direction. It was the, uh, one of the foundational ideas behind our Z3 pinch um, strategy, which occurred later. Um, but in this case, you can see uh, massive sell-off that's the max pain. Very tightly compressed doji at the end of the run. That's the range compression. And now I played to the long side with an entry at the green line. Initial target of the Bollinger Band mean. Second target, uh, uh, previous swing high or a return to the RL270. And you, you can see uh, that this kind of move is not abnormal. In fact, especially from this price level, when you see what happened last time price was here and and the previous time it was here, you get these nice long runs at the end of a large directional move, and that is forming the basis of the psychology behind maximum pain range compression. So, this is Ken Long at Tortoise Capital. Thanks for your kind attention.